Hey there, this is Jess from Make and Do Crew, and in this video tutorial, we're going to learn how to make the Dwell sweater. And this is a great sweater to try, even if you've never made a garment before, because the construction of it is super simple, and I'm going to walk you through each step in this video. First, we'll crochet a big rectangle, which will fold in half and seam into a shrug. Next, we're going to add a collar, some simple sleeve cuffs, and lastly, best of all, some pockets to round out this cardigan. The supplies we're going to use for this sweater are Lion Brand Woolies Tonal Yarn, which is a Category 5 bulky weight yarn, as well as a size N hook, or whatever size you need to achieve the gauge that's listed in the pattern. You're also going to want to be able to reference the written pattern, which can be found on my blog, which is makeanddocrew.com, because we're going to talk about how to make the size small medium in this video, and the same concepts apply to the larger sizes, but you're going to want to reference the written pattern for details on the stitch counts and the number of rows you need to work. So the main rectangle is going to be worked in the zeros and crosses stitch, and this one looks a little bit complicated, but it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. And it's a three row repeat where we're going to work one row of a double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain, and it's going to create these little windows here. And then the next row is always going to be a cross. So it's a stitch that kind of looks like an X, and that's just made with two double crochets. And then we're always going to follow that by a row of single crochet. And we're going to repeat that pattern for the entire rectangle. So you can reference the written pattern for the number of chains you need to start with to make the size that you'd like, but I'm going to make a smaller swatch here just for the sake of simplicity. Alright, so the zeros and crosses stitch in general always calls for a multiple of two stitches plus one, and then we're going to add three for the base chain. So I'm making a much smaller rectangle here than the written pattern calls for. So I've chained 16 total chains, and for row one I'm going to work a double crochet into the sixth chain from the hook. So that's this one right here. I'm going to yarn over and double crochet. And then what we've created counts as a chain one space here, and this is a double crochet in the pattern. That's what it will count as. So I'm going to chain one and then skip the next chain down here so I can double crochet in the next chain. And we're just going to repeat that chain one, skip one, double crochet all the way across. So I'll chain one here, skip the next chain, double crochet in the next chain. Chain one, skip the next chain, double crochet in the next chain. And what that's doing is creating these little windows, and in the next row we're going to work X's into those windows. So as I come to the end of the row here, I'm going to finish my last double crochet in the last chain, and then for row two I need to chain three, and I'm going to turn this around, and I'm going to work a double crochet into the second chain one space. So I'm skipping this first one, I'm going to yarn over and just double crochet into that little window. And that is going to be the forward leaning post of our X. So the next thing I'm going to do is yarn over to make another double crochet, but I'm going to work that one into this first window. So to do that I'm going to go behind the first double crochet I worked and work just right into that first window right here. And by doing so, I have created a little X. Can you see that? We're going to work, again, that pattern across this row. So that means that I'm going to work a double crochet. I'm going to skip this space here and double crochet into this space here. And that's going to be one post of my X. And then next I'm going to yarn over to double crochet in the same space that we worked in here. So that's the second space from the beginning. So I've come back here and I'm going to And for row two, I'm going to chain three and turn my work, and then we're going to be working X's now into these chain one spaces. So for the first one, I need to skip the first chain one space, yarn over and work this double crochet into the second chain one space. And then, that's one leg of our X here, we need to make another one that goes this way. So I'm going to yarn over, and this time I'm going to work a double crochet into this first chain one space. 
and we're going to just do that behind the first double crochet we worked so that it doesn't get the yarn doesn't get tangled around that double crochet so i'm just going to go right back here go in that chain one space yarn over to make my double crochet pull the yarn up and complete that double crochet right here at the same level as the rest of my work so you can see that created a little x and we're going to repeat that pattern across making x's whose legs crisscross in each of these little windows so each little window except for the first and last one should have two legs in it for the x i'll show you what i mean i'm going to yarn over here and work into the next chain one space to make my double crochet and then i need to go back and cross it so i'm going to work into this second chain one space here so i'm always going forward and then going backward so i'm going to yarn over move this out of the way and i'm just going to tuck it in right here to grab my yarn again and complete the double crochet right behind the first double crochet of this X. So now we have two X's. I'm going to repeat that again. I'm going to go into the next chain one space work my double crochet and then I'm going to yarn over and go behind that double crochet to work back into the chain one space behind it. So we've got these X's and we're just going to continue in that same pattern until the end of the row. And at the end of the row, I've worked my last X right here. I've used up the last chain one space. And the last thing that I need to do to finish off the row is to work a double crochet into this turning chain that we started with in the previous row. So I'm going to yarn over and work a double crochet right there. And those are sort of like the pillars at the end of the row. So that's what's going to form the clean straight edges of our rectangle. Now we're going to work a row three, which is quite simple. We're just going to chain one and then single crochet in each stitch across the top of these X's. And at the end of the single crochet row, we're going to work one single crochet into this last space here that was before the X. So we've got that little space here. We're going to finish this off with a single crochet and that completes the end of row three. For row four, we're going to do something that we did already, which is work these little double crochet chain one windows across. So to do that, I'm going to start out by chaining four, and that counts as one double crochet and one chain one space. That'll be the first leg of the window. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to skip this first single crochet and the second single crochet because this is counting as our first double crochet. So we don't need to work in here. This is going to be our little space of the window. And then this is the third stitch. We're going to double crochet into that. And then again, we're just going to chain one, skip the next single crochet and double crochet in the next stitch all the way across the row. I'm skipping this one here, double crocheting here, chaining one, skipping this one, double crocheting here, all the way to the end of the row. And at the end of the row, there's something that is very important to pay attention to. And that is that it's going to look like all you have left is one stitch, which doesn't fit the pattern of skipping one stitch and double crocheting. But in this case, we're actually going to work our last double crochet into the turning chain from the single crochet row. And that's kind of different than you would normally work, but that allows us to finish off the row evenly. And now we should have the same number of little windows as we had in the first row. If at any point you're confused on where you're at or if you think you messed something up, you should know that you should have the same number of windows all along. There's no increasing or decreasing in this sweater. So that is all that you need to know to work the zero and crosses stitch. You're going to repeat these three rows, the X's, and then row three where you single crochet, and then row four where you make the chain one space double crochet windows. And you're just going to repeat those three rows 
to create the zeros and crosses stitch. So now you're going to want to reference the written pattern because it will tell you how many repeats of rows two through four you want in order to create the size rectangle that you need for your sweater. And then after you finish that rectangle, I will meet you back here for the rest of the sweater. Okay, so we finished off our big rectangle ending with a row two. So I've taken that row, the last row I completed, and fold it in half so that now the last row I completed is touching the first chain that we started with. So that makes a rectangle where the stripes are running horizontally. And what I've done here is use stitch markers to pin the side. And this is what we're gonna seam. And right here will become our armhole. So you're gonna want this stitch marker to mark where you stop your seam, and it should be five inches from this fold. So that should place it in the, this is a row two, it's an X row. So there's an X row at the fold here, and then there's an X row right here, and it should be in this third row of X's. So that's on either side, it should match up, and we're gonna stop our seam we're gonna start here and we're gonna stop it right before we get to these X's. And we're gonna do the same thing on both sides so we have the same size armhole. And as we work this seam, we're gonna to want to make sure that we're keeping each row lined up. So for example, this little row of windows here, I'm gonna make sure that's lined up right here. Similarly, I'm gonna make sure that this one is lined up right here and that's gonna make our stripes go across and the seam be basically invisible on the sweater. So I'm gonna use a doubled over strand of yarn and my tapestry needle. And I'm just gonna start here in the bottom and work back and forth in what is, uh, I think it's called the woven stitch. It's kind of like the mattress stitch, but we're just gonna go back and forth between each side, doing what's sort of like threading shoelaces. And we're gonna work up to that top stitch marker. Now that I've got the seams done, I turn the sweater right side out so that the seams are on the inside. It just makes a little cleaner edge right there. And it's kind of hard to see because the camera angle isn't wide enough, but I've laid the sweater out um, and the sleeves are at each corner over here. So what that creates is a triangle on each side and that's gonna kind of be the dolman sleeve and this will become the edge of the collar. So what we need to do now is attach our yarn down here and then work the collar up around this edge and then what you can't quite see over here is it's gonna come back down over to this edge. So I've placed stitch markers at this point where the side collar edge intersects with the bottom of the sweater. There should be a double crochet there right at that point that you're gonna to wanna to put a stitch marker in so you know where to start and stop the collar. And if you're right-handed, you're gonna attach your yarn on the left side over here. And if you're left-handed, you're gonna attach your yarn over here. And if you remember from the pattern that we used for the rectangle, we're just gonna repeat that for the collar. So before, when we had worked one of these rows with the little windows, then we would follow it up with a row of the X's. So that's what we're gonna start with right here. So I'm gonna attach my yarn right here in the marked double crochet stitch. And I've just got a slip knot on my hook here. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull the yarn through, fasten it down. And from here, I just need to begin a row just like I did in the rectangle pattern. So I'm gonna chain three and then I will, I'm just gonna work over this tail as I go, but I'm going to yarn over and make my first double crochet in that second chain one space. So that's just like we were doing it before. And then I'm gonna yarn over and work back into the first open space and that's gonna complete my X. I'm sure that looks familiar to you because you have already done a lot of it. So we're gonna just continue in this pattern and we're gonna work from here all the way back over to this stitch marker. So I've worked my last X here in the last two open chain one spaces before my marked stitch on the other side of the sweater. So I'm going to just double crochet in this marked stitch. And again, that's just how we ended these 
X rows when we were working the rectangle. So it's just the same pattern. And now I finished that off. That's gonna be the bottom edge of the sweater. And now I'm gonna chain one and turn this around. And what comes next in the pattern, if you remember, is we're gonna single crochet in each stitch. So I'm gonna single crochet back along this row. It's gonna go up the side of the sweater, around the back of the neck, and then back down the side. And we're gonna finish this row back where the first stitch marker was. And from there, we're just gonna proceed like that in the same three row pattern to build the collar. So I've finished up the width of the collar now, and now that I've ended with a row three, it's been worked all the way around the collar, I'm gonna flip this so that the bottom of the sweater is in front of me. And I'm gonna work along the bottom. So this is the collar right here. I'm gonna work this, and then I'm gonna work the bottom of the back of the sweater, and then the other edge of the collar in single crochet. So essentially what we've done then will be created a full lap of single crochet all around the edge of the sweater. And to do this, I'm just gonna work a extra single crochet in the corner here, just to help move my yarn around the corner. And then I'm, because I'm working along this edge here and there's not a ton of rhyme or reason about where to put the stitches, I'm just gonna work consistently so that what I end up with is a smooth edge. Um, I don't want it to look bunchy. I don't want it to look stretched too thin. So I'm gonna just work along here, placing single crochet stitches evenly so that I can make a nice tidy edge along the bottom of the sweater. So now along the bottom edge of the back of the sweater here, I'm gonna just be placing two single crochets in each of these chain one spaces. And then I'm gonna work the final edge of the collar, just placing my single crochet stitches kind of evenly across the bottom. And then I will put a second single crochet stitch in the last corner stitch, and then slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round to join everything up. So next we're gonna add a little cuff at the end of what will be the sleeve, and that's gonna be worked in the bar stitch, which will create this ribbed look here using single crochet and post stitches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm over here on my other sleeve, and I'm gonna attach the yarn right here. This is essentially like um, the underarm part. So this is my previous seam where I sewed the rectangle, and I'm gonna attach my yarn here with a slip knot on my hook, and then pull the yarn through to attach it. And now with the right side of the sweater facing out, I am going to work 22 single crochets around this opening. So I need to chain one first, and then I'm gonna put 22 single crochets sort of evenly spaced around this circle, and then I will slip stitch to the first single crochet to join the round. So I've slip stitched to join this round here and placed a marker so I can see where it began. And now I'm gonna chain one and I'm again just gonna go around this whole round single crocheting in each single crochet. So there should be 22 stitches again at the end of the round and then we'll slip stitch to join it. So now I've completed round two and I'm going to work my first round of post stitches here. So I'm gonna chain one at the beginning and single crochet into the first stitch. And then my next stitch is where I'll start the post stitches. So to work a post stitch, instead of working into the normal top of the stitch here, we're gonna work into a post, which is this vertical part right here, in not the row right below this, the row we're working, but the row below that. So what that looks like is I'm gonna yarn over and work a double crochet by putting my hook behind this post from the right to the left because I'm right-handed. If I were left-handed, I'd do it the opposite direction this way. And then I'm just gonna yarn over and grab my yarn and pull it up to the height of this round that we're already working. So I'll complete the double crochet here. And what that does is create this little ribbed stitch that will look like ribbing on the sleeve. So now I'm going to single crochet in the next stitch and then I'll work another post stitch right here. So I'm instead of working into this one, I'm gonna work into the post below it. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook, pull the yarn up, and then complete my double crochet. And when you're trying to figure out where to work your next stitch, you can look at this and say, 
our post just occupied the space that this stitch would have. So we're essentially skipping that stitch there because we're working a post on top of it. And then I'm gonna single crochet into the next stitch. And then I look down here and say, okay, my next stitch is right here. So I'm gonna work into the post below it. And that's often a little bit to the left of where you would think it would be. And that's just because we're working in the round and the stitches look a little bit staggered. If you're left-handed, it's gonna be a little bit to the right. So here I have the place where I would normally work and I'm gonna look below that for this next post right here. Insert my hook and complete the double crochet. So I'm going to finish this round by just alternating um, one single crochet and one post stitch and I will end with a post stitch and then I will again slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round to join the round. For round four, we're gonna work another round that's just a single crochet. So I'm gonna chain one and then single crochet in each stitch and slip stitch to join. And for round five now, in every subsequent odd number row, we're gonna repeat that post stitch pattern. So that's a single crochet in the first stitch, and then we're gonna work a post stitch, but now it's gonna go, instead of under the single crochet post, it's gonna go under the post stitch from the previous time we did posts. So that's just a yarn over and I work my hook underneath that post, bring the yarn back up and finish the double crochet. So then I'm gonna single crochet one and then do this double crochet post in the next stitch and I'm gonna repeat that all the way around. Each time here we should have 11 posts um, in the smaller size of the sweater. And to continue to make the sleeve, now we're gonna work just repeats of rounds four and five, alternating those until we have a total of 17 rounds, counting from that very first round that we worked around the edge of the sweater. So that means that all the even number rounds are always gonna be a single crochet round, and then all the odd number rounds are always gonna be this alternating post stitch routine like we're doing here. And when you feel like your sleeve is long enough or when you get to 17 rounds, go ahead and fasten off and repeat this exact same process on the second sleeve. And the pockets are pretty straightforward, so I'm just gonna talk you through them because they use the, all the same skills that you learned to make the shrug. It's just a smaller rectangle now. So we're gonna wanna make two of these, obviously, and to make the pocket, we're gonna work the same pattern of rows that we worked in the rectangle. So just reference the written pattern for that and know that it's all the same things you did in the big rectangle. The last thing I'll say is that your final row is gonna end with a single crochet to clean up this edge, and then you're gonna wanna just work it around the corner of the pocket so that it goes from here and tidies up this edge that's gonna be the top of your pocket. So in the corners there, you're gonna make sure that you have a normal single crochet stitch that you would work in the turning chain, and then you're gonna work two more just to kind of round out that corner. And if you need to adjust it a bit just to make your rectangle look good, feel free to improvise. So I would just recommend keeping a long tail when you finish your pocket so that you can use that same strand of yarn for sewing your pocket to the sweater. And I have my sweater laid out here. It's kind of hard to see, but this is the front collar part. So this is the bottom of the sweater right here. And I have already tried on my sweater and I can see that I would like the pocket somewhere in this area right here. So I, what I'll do now is pin it on here with either some safety pins or stitch markers and kind of try on the sweater, see if I like the position of the pocket. And then when I'm happy with it, I will sew it on um, and repeat that on the second side of the sweater. So a couple things to note here is that you're gonna want that last edge that you single crocheted on facing the top of your sweater. That's where your hand's gonna go in. And then you're also gonna wanna just make sure that where you're sewing your pocket onto the sweater, you're lining up the stitches to kind of make the pocket invisible. So here I've got this lined up with a row that's solid and then I'm facing these windows 
uh, toward each other so that that can line up when it's sewn on as well. All right, there you have it. You've completed your very own dwell sweater, which I really hope you enjoy and get a lot of use out of. I would love it if you followed along with Make and Do Crew by subscribing to my weekly email. I send out free crochet patterns just like this. Thank you so much for watching and happy crocheting.